This is the Miranda engine for the Firefly MLV, or Medium Launch Vehicle. I kind of like that. In many ways, they're duplicating the naming process that the Indians use for a lot of their vehicles as well. Very descriptive, nothing fancy, but at the same time, impressive as hell. And by the way, sorry to wait so long before I started narrating, but I had to give you at least a 30-second exposure to this engine. Engine. Now, when it comes right down to it, this engine is nothing all that special when you compare it, say, to the SpaceX Merlin, because both engines use liquid oxygen and kerosene propellant, or RP-1, and both engines have a similar amount of thrust. The Miranda has a bit more, 230,000 pounds of thrust versus 190,000 for the Merlin, but... Overall, they are fairly similar. But here's what the big deal is as far as I'm concerned. This is not being reported by much of anybody. Firefly, who have accomplished so much lately, including landing on the moon. Up to now, they are the only private company that has successfully landed on the moon without a hitch, with their spacecraft, the Blue Ghost, functioning perfectly through the entire mission. No private company has accomplished this yet. In addition to that, Firefly has successfully launched five payloads into orbit. They have had some failures, but nevertheless, the sixth flight of their Alpha rocket is about to go here shortly, and they have carried a number of payloads for the U.S. military. They actually have a very close relationship with the U.S. Space Force. This is an impressive company, and now they're building a medium launch vehicle to replace the North Northrop Grumman and Terry's. They're actually building two different rockets when you think about it, and we'll get to that later in the video. But again, the media seems to be giving them no recognition. It's all about SpaceX and Starship, to a lesser degree about Rocket Lab, maybe a little bit about ULA, not much about this company at all. Well, I intend to change a bit of that today because I got an opportunity to interview these folks in person at Space Symposium yesterday. Folks, we have a rare and unexpected opportunity. You got an opportunity to talk to Firefly today. I know a lot of you are very excited about this. Thanks for joining us. Would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the viewers? Hi, yes, my name is Cody Mason. I'm a launch vehicle integration manager for Firefly Aerospace. I started back in 2018 and have the pleasure of seeing this company grow and become what it is and, and be part of such amazing missions as our Blue Ghost Mission 1 and um, and, and our, our frequently launching Alpha launch vehicle as well. So, yeah. So a lot of folks want to know, because and, and then again, other people are not aware that you guys are upgrading your, your capability tremendously to, to replace Antares, perhaps to carry Cygnus up to, as in fact, you definitely be carrying Cygnus up to orbit. Please tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, as, as most have found in the industry, it's it sometimes uh, can be more easy to build a rocket, but to, you know, to, to replicate that and then to the, the grow your capabilities outside of just that initial uh, mission set can be difficult. So, But Firefly is well positioned now where we are, um, you know, upgrading our cadence and, and producing um, alphas very frequently. We, we have our mission six uh, out in Vandenberg Space Force Base right now on the pad, ready to ca carry a Lockheed Martin's LM400 payload. Um, and then obviously gearing up our mission two for Blue Ghost, as well as our Elytra Dark program as well in, in conjunction with that mission. Um, and then as you mentioned, uh, also our Antares, uh, our, 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 our alignment with uh, Northrop Grumman, and we're building a, um, our A330 launch vehicle for first stage to replace uh, the Antares. Um, and uh, yeah, we're very excited about that program. Uh, it's, it's making tremendous progress. Uh, um, our engine testing is is going stellar, and uh, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to continuing that program and, and building out our capabilities in the medium launch ca category as well. So this is what Cody is talking about, and I actually didn't understand all the details of this program until I started researching it after this interview. Firefly, as I said before, is not building one rocket, they're building two, providing the first stage for the new Antares 330 rocket that will be carrying the Cygnus resupply ship to orbit. But the important difference is the second stage of the Antares 330 utilizes an engine based on the Castor 30X 
XL solid rocket motor, which has been refined to deliver higher specific impulse and greater precision in payload deployment. However, the Antares 330 can only deliver about 8 metric tons to low Earth orbit, which is all that Northrop Grumman really needs it to do. But Firefly was not satisfied with this, and they wanted to make an upgraded version of this rocket for themselves. And so the second stage has a remarkably powerful second stage engine. It's called the Vera. It utilizes liquid propellants, and it generates 200,000 pounds of thrust. And if you compare this to the upper stage engines on, for example, the Vulcan Centaur, it's an enormous difference. The modern RL-10 generates 24,729 pounds of thrust in the vacuum, meaning that the upper stage of Vulcan Centaur, having two RL-10 engines, generates less than 25% of the thrust of this Firefly engine giving this rocket some pretty impressive payload, especially when you consider that most of it is constructed out of extremely light 3D printed carbon composites. Can you tell me in terms of, is this going to be just an Antares replacement or are you building some reusability into this vehicle or any other innovations about it that you can tell me since your company's pretty innovative in many other ways? Yeah, I mean, uh, we're I mean, we're really going to align with where the market's going. If, if, if there's a need for us to, to, to build in that capability, reusability, we certainly will. Um, uh, right now, we're just really focused on getting the Antares program back up and going. And uh, um, but but we are taking a lot of that technology um, and then helping develop our medium launch vehicle for Firefly um, specifically. Um, so certainly there there will be opportunity in the future for us to be able to uh, to show off some of our medium launch uh, uh, progress that we made. So yeah. Now keep in mind, like the Rocket Lab Neutron, this is not a particularly gigantic rocket. The overall length is 55.7 meters, as opposed to Falcon 9, which is over 70 meters in length. And yet, the fairing diameter on this rocket is 5.4 meters, which is a bigger fairing than Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy, making it capable of carrying just about every human-rated spacecraft that is currently being designed into orbit. Orbit. That includes things like Crew Dragon, Dream Chaser, and even <coughs> Starliner. <coughs> okay. But it also has the capability of hauling 16.3 metric tons to low Earth orbit. Again, a very impressive payload for a rocket this small and double the payload of the Antares 330. 3.2 metric tons to GTO and 2.3 metric tons to the moon, which coincidentally is just enough payload to carry the Blue Ghost all the way to the moon, meaning that Firefly in the future will be able to provide provide a comprehensive solution for lunar missions. The CLPS missions that NASA is so interested in right now, Firefly will be able to launch them, Firefly will be able to land them. And as I mentioned before, since Firefly is the only private company to have successfully landed on the moon without any problems, their services are very probably going to be very much in demand. Last question. Um, we've watched a lot of small launch providers, or at least the folks starting off with small rockets, try and fail. We've seen people try to set down on the moon and either fail or not be entirely successful. And you guys have had such a high level of success. What is it about your corporate culture, What is, especially since you've been with the company for so long, what makes you guys so successful? Yeah, I mean, space is hard. I've, as we see that every day, um, it's very difficult. Um, it's very difficult to do things one off. It's very difficult to reproduce those those sort of events. But uh, I think what sets Firefly apart is um, the people. Um, we're a very passionate group of, uh, um, you know, empowered people that want to get out there and own their product um, and and really see it through to success. And and I think it, it really takes a certain personality. And and luckily we found a, a high concentration of those individuals within our team. So we're really well positioned to you know meet any challenges. That come up, um, and uh, as, as you can see through all of our programs, uh, well, or not have seen in the background, we've we've faced those uh, similar issues and challenges that others have, and uh, we've just you know continued to power through them and rely on each other to carry us through. And uh, yeah, fantastic! I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I wish you all the best.
And in the meantime, Firefly is not being idle. Sometime this month, and again, the exact launch date has not been announced, the Firefly Alpha on its sixth mission will be carrying a dedicated payload with Lockheed Martin. This is the first mission of a multi-launch agreement with Lockheed Martin that includes up to 25 missions over the next five years. So think about this for a moment. This company has been to orbit. This company has landed on the moon. This company has secured lucrative contracts with Lockheed Martin, with Northrop Grumman, and with the U.S. military. This company is for real. And if SpaceX wants to maintain their supremacy, they need to keep in mind that they're not just competing with the old boys anymore. They're competing with companies that are very much like them, and they need to watch out as they're nipping at their heels. Thanks again for watching, and thank you to Cody for being available for this interview because I just showed up unannounced on the last day of the conference, hoping to speak to somebody there, and he gave me his time, and I deeply appreciate that. And if you want me to go to conferences like this in the future, I could really use your support. I'm still running a little bit in the red on this trip. All the details are in the description. So until next time, stay angry about space.